Egypt has two faces. One is of a Western ally heading slowly but surely towards democratic reform. The other is of an authoritarian regime which beats, kidnaps and tortures any opposition. Welcome to Egypt, where emergency law has been in place for 25 years and in the past two months alone there have been over 600 arrests of pro-reform protesters. But there are powerful new players in the opposition movement, whose efforts on the street are backed by the worldwide reach of the web. Egypt's government is finding that the usual intimidation tactics aren't working on a younger, net-savvy generation of activists who feel the time for change has come. They're not scared of us just writing blogs. They're scared of us writing the blogs and then marching in the streets. The beatings and insults have become things that happen to anyone, not just those involved in politics. So for us to be afraid and to stop isn't going to make any difference. It's very difficult to know that your friend is being beaten right now and you're helpless, you feel helpless about it. One night in Cairo, two very different perspectives. At Cairo's Opera House, Egypt's elite were out in force on the red carpet, celebrating the premiere of a new film. The Yacoubian building's depiction of an Egypt that featured homosexuality, police brutality and government corruption was always going to be controversial. But for the stars of the film, it was proof of Egypt's growing democracy. The film criticises constructively, not viciously. Unlike the opposition papers, which I don't think are objective anyway. They overstep the mark and are just rude. It shows Egypt has a democracy and that there is freedom of expression. The artists can express their opinions freely, without anyone telling them you can or can't say that. In the less glamorous world of open descent, we were to discover another perspective on Egypt's democracy. As Manal Hussain welcomed us into her home, it was clear that films were far from her mind. Manal spends most nights on the phone or on the web updating the site she maintains with her husband Ala. Manala.net, a combination of both their names, started off as a space to post their thoughts and photos as well as provide technical support for other Egyptian bloggers. But since their involvement in the pro-reform movement, the site has become a platform for dissent. Ala's blogs have been appearing less frequently since he was arrested six weeks ago during a demonstration. Demonstrations are illegal under Egypt's emergency law. They went in, chose specific individuals and took 11 people. They took them and blindfolded them so they wouldn't know where they were going. In court, they were accused of insulting the president and obstructing traffic. Of course, there were only 30 of them, surrounded by thousands of soldiers, but they were the ones obstructing the traffic. Despite being in prison, Allah continued to blog, managing to smuggle out his notes. Today it hit me. I'm really in prison. I'd say prison is not like I expected, but I had no expectations, no images, not even fears, nothing. We've got a lot of comments to his prison blogs. Now people know what happens inside, they're less scared. His being in prison doesn't scare us. We'll carry on. As for torture and beatings and insults, these things can happen to anyone, not just those involved in politics. So for us to be scared and stop isn't going to make any difference. But for us to carry on and make people aware, that could make a big difference. What if Hersni dies while I'm in jail? He is old and senile enough, and I'm sure millions are actively praying for his death. Normally I'd be happy, but now that I'm in jail, it's a scary thought. It would take no less than three months for the dust to settle. Most likely no one but immediate family will remember us until it's over. Screw democracy. Keep the guy on ice until I'm released.
I was scared how prison would affect him. But the fact that he's still trying to do the same things he was doing on the outside, writing in the same witty, occasionally caustic style, I feel like he's still with me when I read what he writes. I feel he's the same and that he hasn't changed. Tomorrow, Manal finds out if Ala will be released or whether he'll be spending another two weeks in prison. I'm anxious. I don't want to think about the fact that he might be in for another 15 days or more. But I also don't want to hope that he might be released, as there's a big chance that he won't. I'll sleep because I'm really tired. I don't have a problem sleeping. I did when he was first imprisoned. But now, I'm so tired that as soon as I hit the bed, I'll sleep. The Egyptian blogosphere is a small but growing community that is playing an important role in the opposition movement. Ala's arrest attracted attention from bloggers around the world and websites were created calling for his release. Political observers have now begun to take the bloggers and their approach more seriously. Through, through blogs, Egyptians abroad and other activists abroad get to know about what's going on. And this is how we create international solidarity and pressure on the Egyptian regime. And this is the indirect effect of the blogs. And then there is an, a direct dimension or impact to what they're doing, which is the fact that they can attract a lot of younger people that we haven't been able to attract through traditional means. One blogger who certainly let people know what he's doing is Malik Mustafa Muhammad, whose blog is named after another outspoken figure, Malcolm X. Newly released from prison, Malik was amongst a selection of bloggers invited to speak at a media conference broadcast live around the Arab world. Responding to criticisms of his actions, Malik fearlessly went on the attack. Fifty years of military rule, each military regime handing over to another military regime, and 25 years of being promised democracy, and then they can just arrest 16 people in the street. And then they're torturing people, even sexually abusing them. So how am I ruining Egypt's reputation, and which Egypt? We write and show our faces, we show our names and telephone numbers, We've broken through this idea that you just talk and write without doing anything. It's not just talk, it's words and actions. This worries them slightly, that we're not scared. We don't care. What should we be worried about? Bring on your worst, and then what? It's an age thing. They're young, they're out there, and they think that the more courage they have, the, the, the shorter the period of struggle will be. And the other thing is that they haven't been politicized uh, for such a long time. So they aren't very uh, aware of the risks that's, that's out there. Sorry, please. Ayo? As if to prove the point, Ayo. whilst we were talking, Malik's father called. Ayo, Bob. He's working in Kuwait. They threatened him and told him they might deport him because of what I'm doing, that I'm involved in illegal activities. And so the money he sends me every month, well, I'm his son, so he sends me money to help me out. They told him that the money was financing illegal activities, activities that would harm the state and harm me, that I shouldn't be doing this. So he phoned me. What else is he going to do? I mean, they brought him into the embassy. It was a really big deal. One thing that Manal and Ala need not worry about is their parents' support. Ala's parents were activists themselves, who were as surprised then by his politicization as they are now concerned at his imprisonment. He wasn't particularly interested in politics, actually, and he used to think that we were... <laughs> yeah, this was always, you know, a point of uh, difference between us. He, he considered our generation old-fashioned, the way they go about politics is old-fashioned, it doesn't work, uh, things like that. You could say that the government pushed him into activism. 
he used to come down and, and watch the demonstrations and take photos and stand aside with the journalists and, and watch things. So he, we were going together to the Kifaya demonstration, which was against the referendum. He was going to be standing on the sidelines. I was going to demonstrate and I got beaten up. So he intervened, so he was beaten up too. He was hurt, he, the, the, his uh, laptop was stolen. Uh, and after we went home, we discovered that people had been beaten up and sexually harassed. He, he, he was so angry that he became an activist, yeah. it, was, it was like that. And a, lot, yeah, a number of his friends, that's when they entered the movement, because they were so angry at what happened on the 25th of May uh, 2005. Another blogger who's brought the regime's tactics to light is Noura Yunus. You know, I, I use my small camera to make small videos of the, uh, the, the protests, so we, we then upload them to the internet and people download them later. You see the plainclothes people, they come and then they mingle with the demonstrators and then they start beating them from, from behind. But I feel that it's very important to have it documented, you know, and archived in one place. Yeah, I always go with my camera and I, I try to take um, like small videos and, and pictures. So what happened is that before any demonstration, it became our mission to go and cover. For the blocks. So they beat journalists and everybody was a camera, they tried to take the camera. So we learn to be discreet sometimes and we learn to run away. And Nora and the other bloggers cover and report demonstrations, but they are also active participants. I think my very close network of bloggers I met in the street and then the network became wider and wider because they kept introducing me to other bloggers and so this is Laila, Alaa's mother, and she's saying we're going to protest in, uh, in front of Al-Basatin police station in half an hour from now. Because one of the people who's being beaten inside the uh, police station. Bye bye. bye. It's now 10 past 10 and we are on our way to um, the State Security Prosecution Office because today is Ale's hearing uh, and it will be decided whether he gets another 15 days to spend, uh, to be spending two months in prison, he already spent six weeks, or he will be released. So, if it happens, I will be prepared for it. I will not, uh, you know, crack down. So, because if he doesn't get released today, there will be other things to do. There will be, uh, I'll be visiting him uh, tomorrow or after tomorrow. And so I need to prepare things. I don't have a lot of time to, to go into hysterics. <laughs> Manal was concerned that the cameras might affect Alaa's parole hearing, so we stayed away. After a day's wait in the sun, Manal finally got the news she'd been hoping for. Alaa was to be released. Unfortunately, the release was not to go smoothly, and Manal was to wait even longer to be reunited with Alaa. Um, we thought that he's going to be released the same night from this police station, but he didn't for some reason, we don't know. Today, when Manel went to see him, I don't know, she said she was, she came out of the police station, she called me over the phone, she was crying. She said he was beaten and he needs our help. 
it's very difficult to know that your friend is being beaten right now and you're help you feel helpless about it. We are going to Ala's home. He's finally home. He's just been out an, an hour ago. The things I missed most while I was in prison, in this order, are Manal, the internet, and freedom. In jail, we got a strong impression that the state was being more oppressive with us. Not all of us understand how serious that is. We'll need to calculate our next move. But I don't mean we should worry about how the state is going to react. I mean, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. After 45 days in prison, Ala is keen to get back on the net and to do some proper blogging. A visit to Manala.net the next day showed Ala was back to blogging in earnest. And over the following weeks, one thing dominated his post a determination to continue campaigning for others still in prison and to continue demanding reform. Though the Egyptian regime may develop new tactics to rein in these dissident voices, new blogs are being created each day, and the voices behind them are getting louder and stronger. This is one fight the Egyptian regime may not be able to handle. <laughs> 